be sure to check out one of my wood model instruction books, available at Amazon. The links are in the description. Hello everyone, this is S.G. DeVries, and today's video is going to be about building a button box for the Xbox Adaptive Controller. The controller looks a little bit beat up in this photo. That's because we've been using it for three years already. Most of the clips you're about to see were taken three years ago when I originally designed this controller, but I recently found them when I thought they had been deleted. So I wanted to make this video to maybe give people some inspiration if they were looking how, how to make one of these themselves. So this is the process that I used. In case you would like to copy my design, I have included some scale drawings at the end of this video and also some links in the description of the buttons and the joysticks that I used. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here about my proof of concept model. I built this just to test out button arrangements and sort of just to see how things would work. I never intended this to be my final design, but you can see it has some stability issues. But we're just going to move straight on to the final product that I ended up designing from this concept. I needed something that was fully adjustable and yet held the buttons a little bit better than the first option that you saw on the video. And so what I have designed done is designed a um, kind of like an interchangeable grid system, much like you used to have those old plastic boxes that you could m modify the dividers in. And I've got to have a series of little dividers. I've got uh, three different lengths that I'm going to be using, which will be able to be interchangeable and fit right up against each other into any sort of grid pattern to put the pieces in or put the buttons in however you want. So right now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm making these out of these blanks that I've already cut. To be perfectly honest here, to make all these grooves in the right location and to have them all line up perfectly just took an insane amount of precision to do it by hand. I would have much rather used a 3D printer, but I don't have one. So if you do, just go for it. So I have all my interchangeable groove pieces cut now. And I just need to make sure that they all fit right and make sure that there's no grooves that need to be enlarged before I cut the holes for all the wires. Um, what I'm talking about is like these pieces here. All these pieces are going to have that arch shape cut into the bottom of them because I have to run a bunch of wires for all the buttons through the bottom of this controller. And also that reduces the weight by quite a bit. Next, I'm cutting a bunch of squares out of quarter inch MDF hardboard to drill the holes in and mount the buttons into. Some of the squares, like the big squares on the right, will be for the joysticks, and the small squares will be for the buttons. I forgot to turn my camera on and I was building this bracket along the back. Step back, you can see with the, the grid system where all the buttons are going to go. Now that bracket on the back is to hold the Xbox adaptive controller, which has to have all the wires plugged into it. That's going to sit back there behind everything. Now I have to drill out a couple more um, things in the side here because I've forgotten that the joysticks plug into the sides and I need to have room for that cord to go in there. But that's how that's going to work and I'll show it all put together here in a few minutes. You can see that this arrangement is a lot more stable. It wedges in nice on either side of her. And you can also see that I've chosen to use some smaller buttons for some of the buttons that are used a lot less often and leave the big buttons for the major ones like the A, B, X, and Y, and then the two triggers, one on either side. This button arrangement worked best for us, 
but this can be completely rearranged to arrange these however you want, just using that grid system. We chose to use a vertical alignment on the two joysticks because it's hard for her to use those two at the same time anyway. And this way I just sit next to her using the Xbox Copilot feature using a standard Xbox controller and then I control the camera and she can do all of the movement without having to worry about uh, targeting the 3D camera. Well I hope this short video maybe has given you some inspiration and some ideas on building your own. I've attached some drawings here at the end. If you look at these dividers closely, it may seem like there are some mistakes on, you know, the width of columns and exactly where the arch is positioned, but they are all correct. These are all sized to provide three inch squares to mount the buttons in. They interact slightly different in the box based on whether they abut each other or whether they touch an edge. And so it may look like some of those are wrong, but they're actually right to make it all interchangeable and work perfectly in the box. This is the button arrangement we settled on, with the small squares being buttons, and then the larger squares being either the joysticks or there's the uh, left, right, up, down keypad that is next to the top joystick. But of course, you can arrange this any way you want.